All right, gang, I didn't want to bore you. So I got the old shaft out, and it is right there. Uh, it took quite a bit of convincing to get it out, but you can see that line right there. I went ahead and slit that sleeve. I slit the sleeve. Um, and I've got it packed full of grease, so I'm not going to have a problem there. Then installed a new rod through the eyelets. And I just need to put the springs back on. I'm just going to put them on loosely. Because the way you adjust the down pressure is you put everything together. And... Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> Stutter, stammer. You put everything together and you put these on loosely and then you set your down pressure by tightening the uh, fender washers against the springs to get your down pressure. So I'll show you all that when we get it on. But it's finally time to get it on. Got sidetracked, sorted out all my rebar, sorted out all my flat stock, sorted out all my round stock. Got buckets in, everything is in buckets so it's easier to manage and handle and all my flat stocks down underneath there my small pieces anyway that's beside the point we say we get the sucker mounted all right it's easier to put your uh, tractor in neutral and roll your tractor up to the blade uh, instead of muscling the blade around right now i'm just gonna get this jack under the hitch so that I can raise it up without having to struggle because this blade weighs a good penny and then get it centered to where it'll scoot in just like that and you want to get it up high enough so that this pin will climb up into that little groove there get it forward and once you get it forward started down into that little key slot and get your jack out of the way and check the other side make sure that the other side is in about the same position if not adjust there we go little tug on it and just roll forward when you roll forward it's going to seat that pin down into the front mount and then you'll take either your flat piece of bar stock or flat piece, yeah, flat piece of bar stock or in this case, um, it's uh, got two mounting positions on it since it's for a legacy. And you take your pins, just run your pins home right into the holes. Just like that, very easy. And then set your cotter pins in, get around to the other side. That one in. We went through this before on part one, but may as well do the whole thing in one one video, right? Right. We may have to wiggle the blade a little bit. Come on, get over here. There you go. Now it's in cotter pins in. I recommend putting the cotter pins to the ends so that your uh, cotter pin is to the inside of the frame instead of mounting it to the outside. It's a little more difficult to get it to the inside but you have less of a chance of the cotter pin getting kicked out by snow or something else. go ish that part of that hitch just really took the wind out of me out of my hands I know I gripe about them a lot but they're the they're the bread and butter and when the bread and butter <laughs> can't bread and butter <laughs> you're kind of kind of stuck okay now the blade is in a resting position what I'm going to do is 
change the camera view and camera angle um, and we're going to get the lift rod installed after we get the lift rod installed we'll start the tractor up and go through the motions make sure that it's operating the way that it should as far as just up and down and then we'll tackle making the uh, angle from the seat rod bracket for the tractor itself because I don't have one. I had my hands on one yesterday. Or I had my sights on one yesterday. Didn't get it. Um, at, at one of the places that we stopped. And then Sean, I realized that uh, uh, Sean with the quick way has one that he d actually does not need because his blade is a hydro adjust blade. So he doesn't need that lift rod or the angle rod bracket because he doesn't have the angle rod. So, anyway, I'm going to have to take another trip <laughs> up north. So, let's cut the camera. We'll get you in a position where you can see this lift rod install. Alright, we are under the tractor, facing forward. What you're looking at right here, this is the drag link for the steering. Or the tie rod, rather, for the steering. This is the front axle. We have a little gap right up here. Right up there. And that's where that lift rod goes. So set it over top of your tie rod, over top of the axle, and slide it forward. Once you get it slid forward like that, I'm just going to pull the camera right off of here and bring it right around. You get it slid forward. And you come back over here and get the light so we got a little better light. Come back here and you can see here is our lift rod right here getting ready to go into that. So pull it into place. When you get it pulled into place, throw a pin in, which I didn't grab. So I'm going to grab a pin. I'm going to throw the pin in that. Then we'll show you mounting that to the actual rock shaft in the back hold on all right we are under the tractor getting little bits and pieces um, in order to get these two to line up you can reach up and grab the uh, lift lever and you can move this the rock arm back and forth or the rock shaft back and forth just by pulling on it and pushing on it to get it lined up. So I've got it lined up now. That's why you've got a hold of the lift lever going in one direction or the other. I uh, don't believe it matters which direction. And then you pin it back here, which I had to make a couple of pins using a sleeve. Put the pin in from the frame side. Let's get her up in there. I had it in there a little bit ago. Here we go. Yes, I did a practice run. Wanted to be sure that everything was the way that it needed to be. Come on. Almost. Oh, <laughs> where aren't you going? It figures you turn the camera on and things don't work the way you want them to, right? I'm a wiggling. Come on. One way or the other, you're going in. Come on. <laughs> it just went right in when I did the practice run. Okay, anyway, you put it in. And then this stop block, I'm going to fight it off camera. You get the pin in. Once you get the pin in, the stop block here, so that when you put your cotter key in, this pin won't turn, and you won't catch that cotter key, uh, anyway, the cotter pin anywhere. So let me get that in, and then we'll start the tractor up and move the blade using the lift. Hang on. 
Okay. Back from the abyss. AKA under sunny. We're gonna start it, lift it, lower it. And then I'll show you guys um, tensioning these springs for the down pressure. So let's get her started. see I just compressed those springs um, that's quite a bit of down pressure so I'm gonna relieve the down pressure well let's jack the front of the tractor up and see how much down pressure that's actually given us Are you game for that let's see let's get right here that way I'm not interfering with the uh, blade and we'll see how long it takes before the blade actually comes up off the ground and you can see those springs are decompressing and the blade is still on the ground the blade is still on the ground we're still decompressing Still decompressing. We just now got the blade to where it's about to come off the ground, and we've got two and a half inches or so here. So I'd say that's plenty of down pressure. But what we're going to do is I've got to run them in far enough so that I can get these two jam nuts on. So all I'm going to do is run that nut in and that nut over there in. Get those jam nuts on. We're going to call that part done. Then what we're going to do is get the lift arm or the angle from the seat rod mounted. And then we have to make the rod, the rod holder. I'll show you the one that I made for Ugly Alice years and years and years ago for operating a big 46 inch blade thought it was over here somewhere it's just an eyelet on a bent piece of metal and I don't know where it is irrelevant we have a couple pieces of steel that we're going to use to uh, make our lift rod I didn't have a piece that was long enough so all I'm gonna do is make one out of both out of two and I'll just drill a couple holes in each and just bolt these together but uh, I'll show you a generic drawing of what the lift arm support or the angle from the seat support rod supposed to look like so hold tight all right I told you it's gonna be a generic drawing so here's the generic drawing okay got a little lip on the bottom and then it bolts to the side of the frame comes up takes an angle out so it doesn't hit the hood and then you have 
an eye bolt at the top that the rod passes through. Clear as mud? Good. So now we're going to get to making it. Okay, if you guys actually want a visual of that rod, not the best picture in the world, but this is that rod right here. This goes down, it bolts right there. It's got a lip that wraps underneath the frame. Comes to here, jets out, comes up, little bend here, up, and then your rod just goes through the eyelet, like I showed you in my cute little drawing. So, right now, we're going to uh, lube the table up real good. We're going to put this on. And I guess the best place for me to clamp you is right here on the blade. And give me just a minute to get things set up and we'll uh, get that cable on the blade. Alright. Now, you've got your cable end and that piece right there mounts right here and I think I'll mount it with that slot facing down just like that yes I like that better then you have a washer and a cotter pin Boom and boom. Get in there. Doing a terrorist thing. Boom. Okay. You got that on. That's all secured. And you want to angle this up like this so it's out of the way of everything. And then cinch it down. Two half inch wrenches. Just pinch it into place. Have it angling towards the right side of the tractor. Just like that, so that it won't spin. Okay? Then that ball end right there, you take this piece, has a hole with a slot, and then just a hole. Insert the ball of the cable into the hole, slide it around, and then it mounts right here to your, to, to your paw. Okay? Set it down, poke your pin through, which I had just out of camera view here. And insert your pin, clevis pin. And try to face your clevis pin backwards if you can. So now that's set, that is ready. So if I grip the handle, it will pull that back. And I'll do that now just to demonstrate. All right, and we slide down here just a little bit and change our angle. And we have our piece of flat stock that comes out with a hole in it that's where your push rod goes so you want the handle facing up in the air I'll show you that real quick face it up in the air just like that then washer underneath and then your clevis pin. Oh, stay there, washer. I knew that was going to try to drop off on me. Come on now. Come on, fingers. Cooperate. There we go. Okay. Put it in. And that's secure. All right. Secure. Now, that takes care of the installation as far as it being operable now. Now, we're going to build the bracket that's going to hold this rod in position. It needs to be far enough away from the hydro handle so that I'm not bumping my hand. 
but it has to be in tight enough so that when I'm operating it remember there's going to be a snow cab in here on here so not on this tractor but this needs to be in for it I can make adjustments to it in fact uh, I may actually be getting the correct rod uh, from one of two places actually so the, the correct bracket so now we're gonna make the bracket all right here we go here's the bracket I just used one piece of that steel that I had and I folded it under the hole a couple of bins going around the lower cover coming up I bolt zip tied the cable here and I crisscross zip tied the cable here to keep it in place and there's that and it's far enough away from my lever uh, it's not going to let me because it's in park um, far enough away from my lever that I can operate it so what do you say we operate it? Uh, a noise alert. Okay. Let's see how everything works. chicken dinner there we go so until I get a hydro cylinder I mean get one installed and all that fun happy stuff which hopefully will happen eventually um, we've got us a five foot wide blade yes sir e Bob we do I'm jazzed about that I'd forgotten all about having this and I'd been hunting high and low high and low high and low for uh, Sunstar blade uh, 48 inch Sun Sunstar blade and this one was in my position all the while so yay I get, push an extra foot of snow obviously those tires won't do the trick but I do have some 26 12 12 ags out here that I will be throwing on when I'm doing snow duty they're sitting right there uh, they won't be pretty but they'll get the job done um, of course all this is going to be getting switched over to the loader tractor once I relieve the loader tractor of its uh, loader but for right now I'm just going to leave it on sunny and I've got piles of brush to burn when the wind dies down and other stuff to scrape away We'll play with it a little bit, but I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Looks good, I think. I think, even though it's gray and the rest of the uh, paint on the tractor is black, but that looks like a good photo op right there. Okay, friendly neighborhood Zippo. I promise you guys. I will see you on the next one. Later. I'm out of here.